What is up guys, Alex from Anna Creates here, and in today's tutorial, I wanna show you an easy way to add custom shortcuts to Pro Tools on Mac OS X. This actually works with pretty much any other software on your computer as well. In this process, I'm gonna show you one of the most useful shortcuts that I use every day that doesn't exist in Pro Tools by default. Now, while this is a feature that is built right into Mac OS X and has been around for years, it's something that a lot of people don't think about or don't realize exists. But it is something that I've been using for years that I wanted to share with you. It will allow you to make a shortcut out of any menu item you can find in any piece of software on your Mac. Now, in Pro Tools, one of the handiest shortcuts that does not have an actual keyboard shortcut associated to it is to delete fades. You can create fades in many different ways, but it's not really the easiest to delete fades. So naturally, I had to find a better way than just hitting the delete button, and thus my discoveries that I am sharing to you now. So stick around and I'll show you the ability of what this shortcut can do, along with some other handy shortcuts that I use in this method to help speed up my Pro Tools workflow. So what this technique allows is for you to create a keyboard shortcut for any menu item you can find in any software on your Mac. So what do I mean by this? In Pro Tools, if you go up to the menu bar up here, you can see if I go to edit and down to fades, there is delete fade to start, fade to end, create, all have a shortcut. However, the delete fades, you can see has no shortcut associated with it. You can also read the manual, there is no shortcut for this menu item or for this function. But I would like one, and because I can find this function in the menu items, I can now easily create a shortcut with this technique. What do you have to do? First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to the top left-hand corner, we're gonna click the little Apple logo, and go to the System Preferences. Once you have the System Preferences window open, you're gonna go find Keyboard, which is right here in the second row down. Click on Keyboard. When the keyboard section opens, you're gonna go over to, on this little tab here to Shortcuts and click Shortcuts. Then you're gonna go on the left-hand side here to the App Shortcuts, right near the bottom. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the plus button down here to add a new shortcut. This little drop-down menu comes down. We're gonna go to where it says All Applications, click that, then you're gonna have to find the program you'd like to use, which in our case is Pro Tools. I could scroll through all this and try and find it, but I could also just start typing Pro. There we go, Pro Tools right there. And all I have to do is either go with my mouse and click on it or hit Enter. That'll select Pro Tools as the application. And now I need to specify the menu item that I would like to add, and I need to spell it the right way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go back to Pro Tools here and go to Edit, and then down here to Fades, and you can see Delete. It's just spelled Delete. So that's what we're gonna add. We're just gonna type in Delete. And then we need to specify what the shortcut is that we would like. And this is where you have to be a little bit careful. The key combination that you're about to use can't be a key combination that's already used in Pro Tools or used as a system-wide shortcut. Now, for this example, and a shortcut that I always use is Shift-Command-D. Somehow this is not used in Pro Tools, although I think it should be. But anyway, we're gonna add that as our shortcut for our Delete Fades function. So all we have to do is on our keyboard hit Shift-Command and D. And there you see it show up, and now we hit Add. Now you can see that Pro Tools is now part of this window of applications and delete is here with Shift Command D. Now, if you spelt it wrong, it will not show you here. It just won't work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Pro Tools and now if we go to edit and fades and delete, we see Shift Command D is there right next to delete. It has automatically added that as a shortcut that we can use in Pro Tools. Now, what does this shortcut actually do that the delete button won't allow us to? If we go to a fade in our session and we hit the delete key, it will get rid of the fade. Likewise, let's undo that. If we hit the shift command D key, it does seemingly the same thing. However, if we have multiple fades and we select over them, and then we hit delete, well, we delete that whole section. We delete the whole region, we delete all of it. Let's undo that. However, we just want to delete the fades. And this is where that delete fades function comes in very handy because now with this same selection, we hit shift command D and it deletes all of the fades within this selection, but not the actual region. So we leave everything else intact and just delete the fades. Now I do have to add in a little bit of a warning and this 
doesn't apply to most menu item shortcuts, but the delete function in the menu items actually appears more than once, which means that you have to be careful about what that shift command D is going to do. Because if we go up to the menu item and go to track, we also see right here there is a delete key right there to delete the track. However, watch when I do this. I'm going to create a new track, just a mono audio track, and my selection is on that mono audio track. Now if I go up to the track menu, you see delete doesn't have three dots anymore and the shift command D key is right there with it. I'm just going to let you know that this changes based on what the selection is. Currently it is a blank audio track or blank aux track. That's when this applies. So I can hit shift command D and delete a blank track. As soon as your selection is selecting a track that has audio on it, then that menu item will change to the delete with three dots after it, which means the shift command D shortcut does not apply. I actually use this to my advantage because I can create new tracks for moving stuff around and then easily delete them as soon as there's no audio on them. Now lastly, I'm going to show you a couple other shortcuts that I use in this same manner. So I'm just going to go back here to my keyboard shortcut thing because I'm already in the Pro Tools sub menu when I hit plus, it'll automatically set the application to Pro Tools and all I have to do is put in the menu item and the shortcut I would like. One of the ones I use is name, which is control option command N, add that. And the other one I like is clip gain info. And that one I do is control option command and C and I will add that one. And what I use these for is the clip gain info, this little fader and the zero DB on the bottom corner of the regions and the name of the region so that I can clean up my view on the regions very easily because it's something that I need to do a lot when I'm editing. These menu items can be found in view and then you can see clip and then clip gain info right there or name right there. But those are the most common shortcuts that I use on a daily basis that are not natively in Pro Tools, but I add them. I hope you found this helpful. Please leave a comment down below if you have any other questions and let us know the keyboard shortcut that you've added that you find very helpful. Maybe we'll all find a little bit of insight with that. But that is it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next video. Until then, always be creating.